Hey folks, in this video we're going to be learning how to send an automated HTML email using Google Sheets and Google Apps Script. So we are going to be using a Google Sheets workbook like this to learn how to write Google Apps Script code as well as HTML code in order to send an email like this. So we're not going to be focusing on any stylization tactics. It's merely going to be extracting data from a Google Sheets workbook into Google Apps Script so that it can be sent using an HTML email. So I'm going to be working out of this workbook here that has two tabs. The first is a set of data. Uh, and then the second tab is a summary tab, which has the values that I want to push into my email. There's a copy of this workbook in the description. So if you want to pause the video now, open up the file, make a copy, and then we can uh, get going. If you have a data set already, then uh, we can get going. So we're going to go to um, this replica of the, the workbook that we just looked at, and we're going to begin by going up to the extensions menu. We're going to go to App Script. We're going to be creating two files. So the first one that will open up by default is going to be your Google Apps Script file. We're going to add a file using the plus icon, and we are going to select HTML, and we're going to call this email. We're going to go back to our Apps Script code, and we're going to change the name of the project to email app. You can call it whatever you want to. And then I like to change the uh, boilerplate function to main instead of my function. Uh, we are going to begin by accessing the Google Sheet. And we're going to do that by creating a variable called WB, which stands for workbook. And we are going to access the spreadsheet app dot get active spreadsheet. Next, we are going to access the sheet with the data. And we are going to use a variable called sheet, and we are going to reference our workbook variable. And then we're going to use the native get sheet by name. And in this case, we want to access the values in the summary sheet. So we're going to type in summary. Now, in some of my other videos, I use a more stable solution where I create a custom function called get sheet by ID. The reason that I do that is because if the name of your sheet changes, then this script will break. However, I want to keep this nice and simple and we are only going to be using native Google Apps Script methods and functions. So if you want to learn more about get sheet by ID, those videos are linked in the description. Next, we are going to access the data and put it into a variable. Uh, so we're going to write var, and then we are going to call the variable data, and then we are going to reference that sheet variable, and we are going to get range, and we are going to begin at row one, column one, and then we want to dynamically calculate the last row of the data set. So we're going to do sheet.getLastRow, and then we're going to do sheet.getLastColumn. So what these do is these dynamically evaluate how far, how many rows the sheet goes, or in this case, the, you know, the variable sheet. And it will expand and contract if more columns are added, more rows are added, columns are removed, rows are removed. Finally, we're going to get display values. Now, in the event that you have an error here, it might be because you selected get display value. We want values plural because we have multiple values that we are pulling in, whereas get display value only returns one. Cool. So then we are going to define the data points. So what this means is that we're going to be accessing this data variable in order to identify name, month, inventory, gross revenue, net revenue, any of that type of stuff. So we're going to create a couple variables here. The first is going to be called name, and we're going to reference the data variable, and then we're going to access each index. So we're going to start at one because app script indexing begins at zero. So when we do var 
data using the summary sheet, row one in the sheet is actually index zero, row two is actually index one. Those same values or that same method applies to your columns. So column A has an index of zero, column B has an index of one. So when we type in data one, one, that means we're going to index zero, one, index zero, one in order to get the name. So we are gonna add in another index in there for one, one, and now we are going to be returning the value mat. Next, we're going to um, create a variable for inventory. And we are going to have that access index one for the row and three for the column. Next, we're going to be creating gross rev, which is going to be access or, or is uh, going to be referencing data index one for the row and four for the column. Finally, we're going to be doing net rev and we are going to be accessing that data variable and we are going to be referencing index one as well as column index five. Cool. So now we need to create a mailing list and this variable is going to be called list people and then we're going to put it into an array and we're going to use single quotes because email addresses are strings and then I'm going to enter in my email account. Don't enter this in unless if you really want to send me an email. Uh, put in your email account or an email account that you want to send this to. If you're doing this professionally, I'd recommend sending it to yourself first to make sure this works. That way you don't inundate your coworkers or your clients or whatever with a bunch of emails. Uh, next, we are going to create the template object for dynamically constructing HTML. And we are going to put this in a variable for HTML template. And we are going to set it to HTML service dot create template from file. And then we're going to reference that email HTML file that we just created, right? So when we type email, it's referencing this up here because we are using the HTML service to create an HTML template from a file, which we have up here. Next, we are going to define our HTML variables. This will enable us to use variables within our HTML template. So we are going to use that HTML template variable, and then we're gonna write dot name is equal to name, HTML template dot inventory is equal to inventory html oops sorry template dot gross rev is equal to gross rev and html template dot net rev is equal to net rev cool so now that we have uh, those html variables we're going to have to evaluate and get the content out of the template. So this variable evaluates the template and returns an HTML output object. Uh, oops, sorry. So we're going to create a variable called HTML. And you know what? I'm going to create a couple of lines here so you can see this a little bit more easily. Apologies for that. Var HTML for email is equal to HTML template dot evaluate dot get content. And then we are going to send the email. So we are going to access Gmail app the same way that we access spreadsheet app. And then we're going to use the send email function. And the first value is going to be uh, the recipient. So if you want to, you could just type an email in here 
as a string. So you can do single quote your email, right? We put it into the list people because we could expand and contract the mailing list if we put it into a variable so that we could send it to more than one person if we want to. We're going to do a comma and then we're going to move to the subject. And our subject can be whatever we want to. We're going to be doing single quote and we're going to say status report for and then we're going to add a space and then we're going to use the plus sign and then we're going to reference that name variable that way it'll say whoever you know it's sending to is like this is your status report email um, before we put in um, our body we're going to be referencing an html template so we need to add in a little line about that so we're going to type in this email contains HTML. Nobody will see this, uh, but it, it is required as part of a mail app. Um, and then we're going to use curly brackets and we're going to reference HTML body colon and then we're going to reference our HTML for email variable. And this is going to enable us to um, to send our uh, our HTML uh, via the Gmail app. So we're going to hit save and we're going to go to our email.html and now we're going to write some uh, HTML. So if you haven't done HTML before, um, this will be new to you. Uh, I'm not going to go too deep into how HTML works, but I'm going to do my best to kind of elaborate on things as I do it. So we're going to begin with a P tag, which stands for paragraph. We're going to do um, a less than sign, and then we're going to do slash p to close that bracket. That's how uh, opening and closing tags work in HTML. We're just going to write some boilerplate text. Hello, I hope this email, oops, going to spell that right, finds you well. Uh, you can type whatever you want to here. It really doesn't matter. Now, we're going to want to have a new paragraph here, so we're going to do another uh, opening p tag and then we're going to do a closing p tag and we're going to say enclosed is a status report about and then we're going to do less than sign question mark equals and then we're going to reference our name variable and then we're going to do question mark and a closing or a greater than sign so this is how you reference variables in html so it's less than sign question mark equal sign variable name question mark greater than sign so we're saying enclosed is status report about whatever the person's name is period the following is how they are currently progressing towards their month and targets and then we're going to do a colon we're going to go right to the, uh, the closing P tag. We're going to use an unorganized list, which means it's going to be bullet points. So we're going to do UL, and then we're going to do closing UL. We're going to go back. We're going to hit enter, and then we're going to add in a list item, which is what the LI stands for. We're going to do a closing LI tab, and then we're going to say inventory, colon, space, less than sign, question mark equal sign and then we're going to type in inventory in order to access our inventory variable we're going to do a space we're going to do a question mark we're going to do a greater than sign we're going to hit enter we're going to do another li tag and then we're going to do another li closing tag and we're going to do gross revenue colon less than sign question mark equal sign gross rev question mark greater than sign now remember these variables need to align with the variables that are coming from our app script code we're going to do one more list item one more closing tag net revenue colon less than sign question mark equal sign net rev question mark greater than sign we're going to go underneath the under unorganized list tag we're going to add in another p tag another closing p tag 
And now we're going to have in our uh, send off. We're going to say, please reach out in the event of an error. This is an automated email. So please excuse any delays in response as I might not presently be at a computer. We're going to hit save. We're going to go to our Google Apps script. We're going to hit run. We're going to have to provide it permissions. We're going to select the account that we are sending it from. We're going to go to advanced. We're going to go to untitled, unsafe. We're going to hit allow. Cool. So that worked. We're going to go to our email and we have a security alert and then we have the status report. So you can see that we have uh, the email as we intended to send it with all the HTML in there, all of those variables. Uh, just so that you can see, I am going to go back to um, our uh, sheet here and I am going to change the value from Matt to Mark. So I'm using Google's query for this and I'm going to change it to Mark. And now you can see we have new values in here where his inventory is 74 and blah, 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 blah. We're going to go back in here. We're going to hit run. We're going to go back to our mail app. And now you can see we have a status report from Mark. Hello, I hope this email finds you well and close the status report about Mark. Cool. So to summarize, we learned how to take data from a Google Sheet, write Google Apps Script code in order to collect the data from the sheet. Then we learned how to send an email using Gmail app, and we used an HTML file to create a dynamic uh, HTML email that we send out to our peers, collaborators, or clients.